this is phenomenal work. We were making fun of Keith Olbermann yesterday because he's 64 years old and he decided to call out former University of Kentucky swimmer Riley Gaines and said that she sucked at swimming because she happened to end up tied in the NCAA championship with a six foot four dude pretending to be a chick. And uh, Riley Gaines yesterday, Buck, this is as close to a fatality as you can uh, as you can get. Do you remember? Did you play Mortal Kombat when you were a kid, Buck? I was phenomenal at Mortal okay. Kombat. I bet fatality. a lot of people around our age, if you really won and you got not touched at all, you would be crowned a flawless victory. For those of you out there who remember the video game, flawless victory would be on the screen when you beat your opponent and you were untouched. You had your full life left. This that I am playing for you from Riley Gaines is what I would call a flawless victory as she responds to Keith Olbermann saying the reason she came in tied for fifth in the overall NCAA championship was because she sucks at swimming. All right, Keith, as I was getting my all SEC first team honors down to show you, I dropped it and I broke it, which would be really unfortunate if I didn't have more of those, but lucky for me, I do. So let's go through it. SEC title, uh, second in the country. This is my SEC community service leader of the year award, which actually got me a lot of money. Oh, another SEC title, uh, an NCAA trophy. Oh, look, SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year. Believe it or not, I'm pretty smart. Another SEC title, another NCAA trophy. Oh, that's when we won an SEC championship as a team. Some more SEC honors. Oh, look, another one. <laughs> that's when I broke the 200 butterfly record, uh, the SEC record, which I still hold, making me one of the fastest Americans of all time. And so, Keith, I would be really sad if I broke this trying to prove a point to an old man who can't even seem to keep a job but I've got more of these, so I'm not. Thanks, Keith. Buck, I mean, this is, so let me say this too. The SEC reached out to me, Southeastern Conference, not the Securities and Exchange Commission, for those of you who may not. The, the trophy that she broke, they are replacing. So they're sending her a brand new version of her trophy that, that, that broke when she was showing this video, which is great of the Southeastern Conference. Also, I have, and I know you would love this, I have challenged Keith Olbermann. I have invited Keith Olbermann on this program. I have invited him on any program out there. I will debate, and I'm sure you would be happy to as well, Buck, Keith Olbermann on men competing in women's sports anytime, any place, anywhere. So far, our buddy Keith has been very quiet. He likes to chirp a lot, not responded to a legitimate idea hey you think that riley sucks at swimming let's have a debate about whether dude should be able to compete in women's sports let's actually have it out so first off i'm a little disappointed because for a second there i thought you're going to tell me that elon zuckerberg style you were challenging keith to uh to a throwdown in the steel cage which i will say if you guys wanted to you could raise millions of dollars for charity in that one I think um, I could beat Keith Olbermann's ass. You know, he's got a lot of weight and height on me, though. I'm confident. He's a big, he's, a, he's big, and he's probably a biter. But <laughs> he uh, he would, you know, I'm just saying. Let's be honest, right? He probably scratches for the eyes and bites. But I think you would take him. Um, that all said, what's amazing about Olbermann, and for some of you who are saying, why are we? Well, it's a Friday before Labor Day. So if we want to talk about Keith and uh, – the, the best, and in my view, really the best SNL sketch uh, ever about TV news was probably the Keith Olbermann send-up by Ma uh, Ben Affleck. But um, he's advancing his brand by taking this stand. I didn't want that to rhyme, but it did. Um, but that is true, meaning that even saying something as preposterous as Riley Gaines is not a good swimmer, because she is now associated with conservatives and the right, whether that's fair or not based on her politics, she's just like, hey, let's not have dudes swim against women and run against them and power yeah. lift against them. Um, Keith, his his audience is happy to see him do this because this is the price of being a good Democrat now. You have to be willing to humiliate yourself in order to get the approval and the approbation of the left on this issue because ultimately nobody can win the, the issue of the the transgender debate if they're actually pressed on it, they will, they will lose. They will lose to 
a public that is reasonable and rational, at least. So Keith advances his brand by being crazy, is what I'm saying, which is why guy still has a brand. I got to say this, too. Um, this is an example of an issue that I think rationality and reasonableness and sanity in an insane world is winning. And I give a lot of credit to Riley Gaines. I, I think a site like OutKick uh, that I run, we have a lot of talented people who've written and talked about this. This is one reason, Buck, why I'm somewhat optimistic. We talk all the time about the challenge being how do you reach the persuadable? How do you convince people who are willing to listen to logic and reason? How do you find them? This is an example of a uh, issue that has cut through and you've seen the numbers coming up now on our side in a big way. As more and more people look at this, this is a 80-20, 90-10 style issue. So yes, there is an element of the I'm Keith Olbermann, I'm a far left-wing propagandist in good standing, but the ground that is supporting this argument is diminishing in a hurry. And I'm actually curious, RFK Jr., to his credit, came out and said this was crazy. No other Democrat has. A part of me thinks that there's going to be one or two Democrats that suddenly come out and say this, and many more are going to get in line behind them, because what they're afraid of right now is being the target of the trans community. But if there's many targets, they're cowards, they'll start to line up on what they recognize to be the right side. Here. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this. I don't think you can be a Democrat in good standing with the apparatus if you are uh, pro-life in any respect, right? If you're, if you're somebody who is, is pro-life, and that's been the case for a long time. But I also think that you can extend that. There are a number of things, but you can extend that to... I don't think you can be a Democrat in good standing. Now, there are people that you'll bring up and say, oh, well, they're... You know, but if you're going to be a Democrat who has the full weight of the Democrat Party behind you, I think you have to buy into the transgender um, sports thing. And, and really, we segment it into uh, sports, but it's actually about it's about everything. Yes, because the fundamental, I mean, with regard to the transgender issue, because the fundamental belief that you must have is not this is an accommodation. And I, I always remind people of this. And they said, that's crazy, Buck. That's not. And then I go, no, no. This is actually like the, the religious tenet of the left on this. The tenet of the left is that a trans woman is a woman the same as any other woman. There is no distinguishing characteristic feature or difference that you are allowed to notice. It is a woman like any other woman. And, and for, all, for all intents and purposes, for sports, for gender, for government contracts, for physical attraction. And that is insane. Yes. It is, and that's why I think it's such a foundational issue to connect with. For instance, and I wrote about this a lot in American Playbook, but I, I really think if you are out there and you're frustrated because you feel like you don't have a real connection, maybe you're a grandparent and you know it's Labor Day weekend, you're going to have a cookout and you're going to be around your grandkids and you're worried about their indoctrination. Maybe they're off to college. Maybe they're in uh, high school. Maybe you're going to be like I am today at a high school football game, and you're just going to be around younger people. I think this is, a, this is an entry point for sanity. I, I really do. A topic that you can broach if your kids or grandkids are sports fans, but they are left wing, I think this is the kind of issue that you bring up that, Deep down to your point, Buck, they can't even defend it. There's not some brilliant uh, debater who is out there that will dazzle your mind by arguing this issue. It's very basic. It's a foundational belief system that is untrue. It's a lie that you have to believe in in order to be a leftist. And if you can expose it for the lie that it is, it can be a red pill moment. That moment, Buck, where many people start to question what they have previously accepted as truth. It is the gateway, as it were, to sanity and starting to question a lot of the ideological lies that are the foundation now of the left in this country. Well, if the, think of it this way. If the left can mandate, and let's be clear, we say the left, Democrat Party, same thing. If the Democrat Party 
can mandate as a function of standing in the movement and, and everything else, uh, the most obvious lie. Yes. That then brings into question, what else are they going to lie to you about, right? What, what else do they demand you bend the knee to in the name of an unreality? And I, I think that's why this is so key for them. People say, well, maybe they'll just back off this issue. To back off the issue is to say that they were lying to people as a party about the most fundamental and obvious thing possible, which is that men have penises and women have vaginas and they are different and that is a real thing. Biology is not real is the cover charge that the Democrat Party demands for you to enter the club now. If you ever stood outside, especially if you're a guy, you're not a good-looking girl, girls get waved in a lot not having to pay the cover charge. If you are a dude standing outside of the club trying to get in, in order to be a member in good standing of the Democrat Party right now, you have to pay the cover charge, which is saying biology is not real. And sports distill it to why it is such an essential lie and why so many people are rejecting it.